Hey all, here OS Reviews. So smart rings are the latest emerging form of wearables, packing components similar to a fitness tracker or a smartwatch into something much more compact and perhaps more comfortable for 24-7 wearing, including sleep tracking as well, compared to something strapped onto your wrist, for example. So today we're taking a closer look at the Ultra Human Ring Air, which is one of the larger players in this space. And speaking of just the other day, in fact, Samsung also entered the smart ring landscape with the Galaxy Ring that sells for $400. By comparison, the Ultra Human Ring Air is $350, but this is definitely not the cheapest wearable out there. You're paying a bit of a premium for something that is super tiny, as well as having more of a jewelry-like appearance to it. Whether it's worthwhile or not, we'll find out more in this video. I'll also point out that some other players in this space include Aura, which I believe was one of the first movers in creating a smart ring. Now, that being said, there are two complaints about Aura, the first being for different finishes, including color as well as texture, they charge different pricing, whereas pretty much all the other players sell their rings at the same price, regardless of color that you're picking. Also, Aura has a subscription cost involved for syncing and analyzing your data, which I do find to be kind of ridiculous compared to the Ultra Human Ring here, thankfully has no subscription cost to use their app, which is actually very rich when it comes to insights and data. We'll talk about that more later on as well. So it's just a one-time upfront cost at the very least. So taking a closer look here at the presentation first, they claim that the Ring Air is named that because it is the lightest smart ring on the market. It tracks not only your sleep, as well as naps that you take during the day 24-7, also your heart rate, stress level, SpO2 blood oxygen level, heart rate, steps, calories burned, as well as skin temperature. More specifically, it's 2.4 grams light, 11 times lighter than an average smartwatch, and also going to be crafted out of titanium on the inner compartment, and it comes in multiple finishes and colors as well. And the most recent addition is the one that we have here that's called Raw Titanium. Titanium. So it actually is the same color on the top as it is on the inner layer and should maybe resist scratching a little bit more since even if you scratch it the color will be consistent. It lasts around five to six days if you're more conservative before you have to recharge it again. It can't be larger than something like 30 milliamp hours but it's able to stretch that uh, to last again almost an entire week with 24-7 tracking. Part of the reason I suspect is because there isn't a display which might be the biggest battery drain in smartwatches, so it's going to be more non-intrusive as well. You can pair this with a more minimalist style watch, for example, and still have it seem business professional. That being said, obviously compared to a smartwatch, since you don't have a screen, you're not able to look at notifications and reply back to them. It's really meant just for tracking your activity, your stats, and then reviewing them to make more informed decisions on how you want to live your life. The companion app is available for both iOS as well as for Android, which by the way is another difference compared to the Galaxy Ring, which is rumored to only work for Android at this point in time. And the presentation is also really on point because when you first order a smart ring, they will provide you with a web page URL that allows you to track everything. For example, they will first provide you with a sizing kit in the mail and that arrives really in just a day or two very fast. It actually gives you a kind of 3D printed plastic version of all the rings to find your ideal ring size. You should in their recommendations wear the sizing kit for at least a day or two to get a good enough feel of how it uh, conforms to your hands. And then just downloading the companion app on the phone, you're able to finalize the version that you want, and then it proceeds to ship out that particular version in really just a day or two. And speaking of, if we take a quick look here, you'll see there's a slight indentation on the Ultra Human Ring Air for where some of the heart rate SpO2 sensors are, but otherwise the ring is completely round on the inner circle. And I point this out because I have reviewed one other smart ring from RingCon about this time last year. And I have been enjoying it as well, but the RingCon ring, as you can tell there, has a slightly different design, which includes two more prominent bumps on the inside, which means that the sizes are actually not going to be one-to-one. -one. So when I was picking up the... Ring con, for example, I could choose size 9, it could fit comfortably, whereas for Ultra Human, it converted to something like size 8 for a similar level of fit. So just keep that in mind. The sizing kit is definitely important for you to get a good feel before you order. 
Otherwise, on the inside, we have just the ring itself that is presented in a pretty dramatic way right on top there. And underneath, you'll find access to just a quick thank you card as well as the charging base. This is constructed out of aluminum alloy and it's actually customized for your specific ring in terms of sizing. It'll actually charge in flipped orientations like so and still function. There's a simple status LED on the very top that will glow when the charging is in action. And there's a simple USB Type-C port that's being used there for power. And you have just a braided USB Type-C cable that is included. So taking a closer look at the raw titanium version, it is this brushed finish as opposed to being chrome or mirror-like that you can also find available on their site in other colors like gold, for example, if you want something more glossy and flashy. But this will just not be as uh, prone to attracting smudges since it is going to be brushed and in terms of the finish it's just going to be a little bit more subtle. I've been wearing it now for almost two and a half weeks uh, but so far I'm seeing minimal scratching and on the inside it's coated with kind of this resin material that is protecting all of the PCB and circuitry, which is actually pretty cool to look at, uh, how they were able to really miniaturize all of the tech to fit into something which is so small. You can see various parts, including the processor, as well as some of the lights there for the optical heart rate, blood oxygen. So even though it looks like you're touching the circuitry, you are in fact not. And the ring itself is rated to be splash and shower resistant. So you should be fine just wearing it around the house. And also a comparison with the aforementioned ring con that I have on hand. Ring con's shape is a little bit more square, so this one kind of feels like a circle in the middle with a square on the outside, as you can tell there, compared to this one being more of a perfect circle, uh, regardless of what angle that you're looking at it in. One final difference is ring con technically uses these two metal contacts for charging. So in their case, you can see it will align using these metal contacts here compared to on the ultra human it's using a wireless charging so it's inductive uh, so you just pop it again in any direction on the charging case there are no metal contact points this will be similar to say Qi charging on a iPhone it will also generate a little bit more heat as you are charging wirelessly which is why Ultra Human recommends that you plug this onto a computer for example or in a wall outlet that is not larger than 20 watts uh, so that it can charge at perhaps a slightly slower rate and prevent the thing from getting too hot or warm. Generally speaking, it's not too big of a deal, but if you are leaving the ring plugged in overnight, it will still remain a little bit warm there in the morning. So uh, that is one thing to keep in mind. I would personally recommend, again, leaving it onto this charger for maybe just an hour or two and then popping it off. The only reason why I comment on that is because heat can sometimes be the biggest enemy of rechargeable batteries. Uh, as we know, if it gets too warm, sometimes it may lose its health a little bit more, which is why slower charging, cooler temperatures can prolong the battery health. And while on the topic of charging, maybe last but not least, again, this one just comes with that charging dock. And since it lasts roughly six days per charge, I would say it's not too problematic. You just have to pop it on there very quickly to top it up again. However, some of the competitors, like the aforementioned Ring Con, as well as the Samsung Galaxy Ring, uh, do also come with a battery case similar to on wireless TWS Buds. So the case itself has an extra battery for topping it up a few more times when on the road. So that could be an accessory that would be nice to have maybe in a future add-on or a next generation model. Otherwise, I find the fit to be indeed super comfortable and the slight ridge at the bottom uh, where the kind of heart rate and SBO2 should be pointing downwards as you're wearing the ring. You can get by with your day-to-day -day without really noticing that you're wearing anything on here at all. Moving over to the companion app from Ultra Human, it syncs data over very quickly using Bluetooth and location services. There's enough onboard storage for it to hold data for subsequent days and even weeks. If you find yourself going longer between syncing with your phone, it will still retrospectively have that data available for you to review later on. Afterwards, you can take a look at a calendar view to see days that you've been wearing the ring, as well as a closer gauge at the stats. And up top, you'll see some dynamic notifications. For example, it's detected short naps uh, here in this example during the day. So it is a true 24 seven sensor. If you sleep anytime, it will count that as sleep. You don't have to be only sleeping at nighttime hours. The only thing I will say though, is it tends to be a little bit on the false positive heavy side. Maybe my resting 
average heart rate is just a little bit lower than average, and I was just sitting in front of my computer desktop doing some work. However, it's detected that as kind of a short nap session, and I found this to happen actually across a couple of days when I was wearing it. But thankfully, these detected nap sessions are always given as a prompt where you can tap on yes or no to actually count that as sleep or not. And it tells us that our average sleep score has improved or decreased compared to preceding weeks that we've been wearing the device. And you can also track some of those light trends over a graph view over here and how that kind of compares to your averages. What can you do to possibly improve on some of those stats uh, is further explained as well, which I have to say is really good because a lot of the other budget smartwatches and wearables such as Rincon will only provide you with a number and if you want to know how to turn those numbers into actionable insights it kind of becomes your job versus Ultra Human provides you with a little bit more breakdown of what those numbers mean and how you can possibly use that to uh, change some of your habits. Up top here we have just our movement score for the day and we can see a breakdown of how many calories we've burned as well as total steps that we've walked. Tapping inside we can see how that trend will compare over time. I found that the pedometer here to actually be surprisingly good. Similar to the Rincon Smart Ring, I was actually quite worried when I first tried out this category of wearables because it's on your finger and inevitably we have more finger movements when we're doing things like typing. But the software calibration uh, using the th six axes accelerometer is done good enough that it knows to differentiate between typing being a smaller movement which is shorter versus an actual stride or step requiring maybe a different inertia or force. So overall when I was comparing it with an Amazfit smartwatch I was actually getting pretty comparable numbers at the end of the day, maybe just around 5% apart, uh, but still close enough that I felt it was a good approximation of when I was active, not grossly over or under. And similarly, things like stress, SBO2, and heart rate, uh, since it is tracking on your finger, I was also initially a little bit worried about whether this data will be accurate, but those numbers I found to be even more so accurate. So the, again, tuning of the hardware is done quite well. You can find a stress rhythm here uh, that will be taking your stress level continuously during the day using the SBO2 and heart rate monitor to kind of gauge how fast your heart rate is and whether you're currently in a relaxed versus stressed versus stimulated state. And if you're particularly stressed or active outside of the recommended circadian window, that is between regular active hours during the day, it would actually decrease your score. So here we have sleep and it tells us that our sleep from last night was actually quite good. Also resting heart rate is tracked continuously during sleep as well in addition to your heart rate and also your skin temperature and it tells you whether you were restless or not, how your averages kind of compare different sleep stages as well. You also have another view that tells us to sleep between x hours for an optimal rest. It looks like we have a sleep debt counter here because I I was under sleeping or sleep deprived earlier in the week. So it tells us to get an extra hour of nap uh, tonight, for example. So again, this is quite intelligent. Just as reference, here is the UI of the Rincon app side by side. So as you can tell, it is a lot more simple. It doesn't provide you with as much context of what the data actually means, things like sleep debt, as well as circadian windows. Uh, these things will definitely not be available on the Rincon app. So much more straightforward uh, versus giving you more complexity, more customization, more personalized insights using the Ultra Human app. So very good there from a software perspective. So here is that aforementioned circadian window phase telling us to start winding down, which will then end in X hours in which we should start to sleep, things like that to give you as reminders. You're also able to start a breathing exercise for meditation and calmness, as well as start a workout, things like running or jogging. So when you start some of those sports sessions, it'll track second per second data points as opposed to being X minutes. So it will consume a little bit more power but give you a more accurate view of calories burned during a specific workout session. We'll take a closer look at some of those courses and meditation in a moment. But further down, you can also take a look at your heart rate data as well as temperature deviations during the day and how that translates to your score going up and down. Are you meeting your goals or not? Further down here, you can also take a look at the battery percentage remaining in some of our prior days maybe our sleep wasn't quite as restful, feeling a little bit warmer because of the higher temperatures. It tells us to maybe rest the previous day versus maybe good eating habits that supported healthier sleep on this particular day versus maybe certain 
aspects of sleep like REM being higher on another day of sleep compared to a previous night where REM was really critically low and that means I should probably eat foods richer in magnesium to increase the REM duration. Now, further down below, we can go into the Discover tab to actually find the breathing, meditation, workout, and sleep related courses and sessions, which is, again, much more advanced than what the Rincon app offered. For example, if you tap on sleep, there are different animal stories as well as sleep soundscapes to try and to get you to wind down, feel more drowsy, kind of similar to white noise or nature sounds that it can play back, brain music for quicker onset of sleep, restful sleep, so on and so forth. So it's actually done pretty well in having this extra tab that again is missing from a lot of those competitors. You can also find again further categorization including one dedicated just for naps versus the meditation allows you to kind of get started and there will be a virtual coach uh, inside of the playlist that tells you to breathe in, breathe out, think about different things, and hopefully feel a little bit more calm at the end of the session. And it will also track your heart rate as well as your blood oxygen during the session. Now when it comes to workout, interestingly, they also have a couple of kind of video type tutorials and courses available. For example, here we have one for maybe, let's say, posture correction versus strength training. Here's a 15 minute session if we tap on this and you'll see it playing there in real time telling you what steps you should be performing as it's talking out to you similar to a personalized coach and then the tracker there will be just again looking at your heart rate as well as your calories burned and functionality in the app continues to grow in a recent update there's now something called power plugs adding support for even more third-party metrics that can be tracked. For example, there's now one for vitamin D. So using sensors like skin temperature, as well as your location services, it'll know your local weather conditions, and as a result, be able to estimate whether you're getting enough vitamin D or not in your day-to-day -day activities. Another one that is new here include caffeine window, providing you with a notification of when you should be consuming coffee and when you should actually be easing off to get better sleep. Some other ones in here include pregnancy insights for women, circle tracking, and there's even ones coming soon, such as AFib detection. So if your heart rate rhythm is irregular, it will also provide you with notifications similar to on an Apple Watch. Some other ones coming soon include jet lag tracking, and it tells you your body needs X hours to rest to catch up in addition to claiming to track the impact of screen time with restfulness and how well you're able to sleep. So the rhythm of software updates also seems to be more frequent compared to the aforementioned Rincon, whereas with UltraHuman, I've been getting software updates pretty much every two or three days, adding additional functionality, which is pretty good to see. So all in all, from a UI perspective, I would say that the companion app is definitely a highlight for the UltraHuman Ring Air. That is definitely an area where I prefer it compared to the Rincon. Despite being an emerging form of wearables, I do really like this. You can't really tell that it's different, in fact, from a regular ring when it comes to the weight as well as dimensions. They've done a really good job of that, and it is able to surprisingly get quite close, or at least good enough when it comes to activity and health tracking that it feels like a good alternative to a smartwatch if you want something more non-intrusive. That being said, there are no smart rings at this point in time that have features like, for example, answering calls or even a vibration motor to give you an alert if a notification comes in. It kind of frees you from some of those distractions in a way, similar to minimalist tech like e-ink readers and e-ink phones, and also delivering on pretty solid battery life. A final point I will say is occasionally in the night you'll see the LEDs maybe flash a little bit red and green as it is detecting your heart rate and also your blood oxygen level. But since that sensor is mostly pointing downwards and if you're lying flat like this, it's honestly not too distracting and you kind of just get used to it. Similarly, as you're doing things like drinking coffee as well as typing on a computer, I didn't find it to be too distracting or getting in the way of just your everyday actions either. Even though they recommend for you to wear it on the index finger, you can also switch it onto your thumb as well as other fingers and hands as well, and it still seems to be doing good enough when it comes to step counting and heart rate in most instances. So if you like the way that it looks, I think this is actually still a very compelling smart ring uh, to consider. You can learn more details if interested in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Ultra Human Ring Air.